There's a lot of press about choline and the importance of consuming eggs to get enough of this nutrient. Can vegans get sufficient choline? Well, you know, it's true that that uh, choline, you know, I think choline was deemed an essential nutrient in 1998. So this is just, we've only known about choline and its importance for a relatively short time. Uh, and vegans do consume less than omnivores because although choline is pretty much distributed throughout the food supply, animal foods are the most concentrated sources like, you know, eggs particularly, but things like meat and fish and liver and poultry are, are all concentrated as well. And choline is important for brain function. It's important for fat metabolism. It's important for the functioning of our cell membranes because it, it you know, is needed to, to form the primary phospholipid in cell membranes. And it's, you know, made, it's, it's used to make neurotransmitters. And so it's, it's really important um, uh, nutrient. And, and we, we actually don't have an RDA for choline, uh, which is a recommended dietary allowance. Uh, we just have an AI, which is like a best guess. Uh, it's called an acceptable intake um, because we actually don't have enough information to establish an RDA. Um, so the AI is, is uh, 550 milligrams for men and 425 for women. Although that does increase during pregnancy and lactation, it's 450 during pregnancy and 550 during lactation. But very few people actually meet uh, the AI for choline. I, I would guess 90% of people don't meet it. And, and that those numbers, um, I'm... <laughs> You know, I'm not sure exactly where they came from, but there was one study uh, that was done showing that we could get deficiency with less than 50 uh, milligrams. And a lot of experts think probably 300 milligrams would be enough for most people, which is much easier to achieve than than four or 500 uh, uh, milligrams. So, you know, we 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 probably if we're pregnant would be wise to take a supplement with choline. Uh, just to be on the safe side, because birth defects have been associated with low choline intake. Um, but otherwise, I think just just having a varied diet, including some really good sources of choline, like soy products, uh, uh, just a cup of soy milk is about 57 milligrams. Um, and that's even higher than dairy milk, uh, quinoa, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, there, there are quite a few foods that are, you know, decent sources. And so, you know, you could effectively get 150 milligrams from one meal if it contained things like quinoa and broccoli and tofu. Um, so you could, you, you could come pretty close to that AI, but if you're around the 300, I wouldn't, I, I actually wouldn't worry about it too much other than if you're pregnant, I would, I would really try to, to aim for the, for the AI. Do you recommend vitamin D supplements for adults? Absolutely. I, I recommend them for both adults and children. Uh, there, there are some people who, who can make enough vitamin D by getting sufficient exposure to warm sunshine year round uh, and maintain good vitamin D status. Um, but they're far and few in between. The vast majority of people in the world uh, don't get enough vitamin D from sunshine. And so they need to get some from food. Um, if you live oh, where I do in Calgary, this morning, it was minus 40 in Calgary. Uh, we're not making any vitamin D between about, oh, October and, and uh, probably March or April. Uh, so, so we need to have a source and, and food can be a source. Um, but there aren't a lot of food sources, you know, you think um, fish and eggs, uh, not a lot of, you know, there's a little bit of vitamin D in mushrooms that are grown in, in sunshine, uh, but there are not a lot of vitamin D sources in, in foods, unless the foods are fortified with vitamin D as cow's milk is, as non-dairy milks are. So you can get some from that. But for most adults, I think it makes absolute sense to aim for a thousand to 2000 IUs a day. Um, it, however, um, you know, it's kind of good to know where you're at. So, so to have a vitamin D test to see where your levels are at. And I've had a number of friends who have done that and found that their levels were just so low. They were absolutely shocked. And uh, Michael Hollick, who's probably the leading expert on vitamin D, actually suggests two to 3,000 IUs a day for adults and at least 2,000 for women and 1,000 for children. So that's, 
you know, that that's um, uh, something to consider. Um, you know, um, I, I think to guarantee sufficiency, you probably should be doing it on a daily basis. And um, for, for people who are, are se severely overweight or obese, they may actually require more. So they should kind of monitor their status. And, and um, yeah, I, th I think we know enough at this point uh, that we can say with some confidence that vitamin D supplements are, are a very reasonable thing to do. Should pregnant women take DHA? Are supplemental DHA and EPA recommended for others? Uh, I, you know, my opinion is yes. Um, and the reason I say that is simply because vegans, the level of EPA and DHA in their, in their blood and tissue tends to be about a third, you know, to a half of what it is for, for omnivores. And, and we do know that higher levels are associated with you know, uh, retinal function and brain development and so forth that we, we need this stuff. And, and yes, we convert more efficiently during pregnancy and lactation, but our levels are still a uh, low uh, and, and we don't know what's ideal, to be honest, we don't. Um, but it still makes sense to me to say, um, you know, 300 milligrams a day of, of DHA and EPA with at least 200 milligrams of DHA for during pregnancy. And, and I would say um, that, you know, if you look at um, fish eaters, uh, people that are getting, you know, twice a week fish intake, uh, their levels do tend to be higher. And, and we can achieve that very same thing by getting our DHA and EPA from the same source the fish get it. And the fish get EPA and DHA from mainly microalgae in the ocean, which are little tiny plants in the ocean. And we're now culturing and, and produ you know, producing this stuff without having to rape the ocean of fish, without having to kill uh, millions and millions of fish. And, and the bonus is that the microalgae-based EPA DHA is, is not contaminated with heavy metals or environmental contaminants the way, of course, fish are. And, and so should other people take it as well? I, I just don't see a big downside to doing that. Um, I, I, I don't take it every day myself, but I probably take it two or three times a week. And I think a reasonable amount is, is two or 300 milligrams. Uh, so that's, that's that.